thank you for joining us uh, for another installment of the Tetration Lightboard series. My name is Loy Evans. I'm a Tetration Technical Solutions Architect. And uh, what we're going to talk about now is uh, what happens when you press the green button. Uh, essentially, if you have had a chance to get into a, a Tetration system, you will notice that uh, if you go into the enforcement uh, section, there's basically just a, a little green button that basically says uh, enforce. So whenever you press that button, there's a number of things that actually happen in the background. So what I wanted to do is just kind of walk through really quickly what exactly happens when you do that. In order to uh, uh, illustrate this, I've drawn out uh, the, the typical IT unicorn, the three-tier app, because uh, truthfully, you'll probably never actually see just that. But it, it works out well for illustration purposes. Um, so in this case, we've got uh, a web tier, an app tier, and a database tier. But if you really kind of get in and uh, turn on the uh, machine learning algorithms, essentially we would scope this to say, I want to just look at the web app and the database. Now, the, you know, from when I say that we want to scope that, that's considered to be kind of like the internals of the application. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not looking anywhere else. And so we might actually see things like where we have a connection to our users in this environment. Uh, or if we've actually got, like, say, a, a DNS or NTP or some other type of shared service. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to see that we've actually got connections to all of these different things. And we'll actually be able to map out not only very detailed about what's going on inside, but we also can map out what's going on outside. That's really kind of where the concept of a dependency map comes from, right? What dependencies live inside the application? but also what dependencies actually live outside, what types of services are being uh, delivered outside the application. So it's actually going to go in and learn about all of these things and present them to us. Well, once we have that information, the, the, you know, that's when we have the ability to go in and say, all right, I understand this application and how it communicates internally as well as all the things that it does externally. So now what I want to do is just basically say, I want to enforce only the behaviors that we have seen and we have said is okay within the application. And then I don't want anything else to, to happen within this. So then I would go and just hit the green button. But what happens behind the scenes? So if we actually look at it, if I go in and hit enforce at this time, and let's say that we've actually got a set of, of rules. We've got maybe port 80 is open from the user to the web, from the web to the app. Maybe we're using port 80, 80. And then from the app to the database, we've got 3306. Uh, and then basically from uh, each of these over to, let's just call this like our shared services block, we're actually allowing ports, uh, UDP ports, um, UDP ports 123 and 53. Uh, so essentially what we're going to do is when we hit that button, Tetration is going to take the policies that we have learned about and what it's going to do is it's actually going to send information to each one of these endpoints. Now, again, we've scoped this one application. Now, you know, there are things within the application that are happening, but there's things w uh, outside of the application that are happening. So what we're doing is we're learning about what's inside of here, and what we're going to affect when we hit enforce is just what's inside of here. So when I hit my green button, the actual focus of that is the scope that we're actually living in at that time. So what's going to happen is, is that we're going to push rules to these different groups. No matter how many elements live within here, maybe there's two web servers or maybe there's you know, a dozen of them. Maybe there's a handful of application servers and a couple database servers. But what's going to happen is, is that Tetration has communications with each one of those censored workloads. So we're going to push a rule to every one of those that basically says what you're allowed to do is allow inbound from the, uh, the application tier to the database on port 3306, inbound from the web tier to the app tier on 80, uh, 8080, inbound from, let's say, the user environment or the internet or basically anybody who's consuming this application, inbound on port 80. And then we're also going to have outbound uh, UDP 53 and 123. So we're going to go in and push inbound rules to every one of these things. We'll push in inbound and outbound rules to each one of these. And at that point, 
we're actually managing essentially the, the native controls on each one of those workload endpoints. So if we we're using Linux, what we would do is we would push rules down to uh, uh, IP tables and we would manage those through IP tables and IP sets on that host. If you're using a Windows device, we would actually push the rules down to the Windows Advanced Firewall. And essentially what happens is that if any of this policy changes, what we would do is we would maintain that within the cluster and then you could go in and say, all right, uh, let's say that you know, we changed our application and we want to do, um, maybe we want to do port 443 instead of 80. We would go into Tetration, into the scope for this application, and if we learned it, we would add it like that, or we could manually go in and modify that policy. Then we would go in and say, click the green button again, and say, enforce the latest policy set. And what it would do is it would actually look at it and say, okay, the only thing that's really different is I've got some changes to the web servers. I push those rules out. It modifies the IP tables and IP sets to match what the current policy set is. And now you're basically enforcing the next set of policy. But what's really neat about that is that once you do that, the enforcement also, it, you know, you've clicked it once and then you've clicked it again. We actually put basically policy version headers on that. So when we did it the first time, that, that's enforcing policy one. We did it the second time, we're now doing policy two, and so on. And so what it actually does is keeps track of every policy record and every change of policy in between those. So let's say that we went in and did that, but maybe we didn't um, uh, properly configure the web servers with the right certificates, and so everything broke and the application stopped working. We could just simply go in and basically say, okay, I don't want to enforce policy set two anymore. I'm going to roll it back to policy one. All I have to do is basically go in and say, you know, click on the policy version, go to policy one and say enforce this version of policy. So that allows us to go in and manage basically temporal sets of policy over time. Now, one of the things that's actually very interesting about this is that we have the ability also to stream whenever we turn on this uh, policy enforcement, it's not just managing things on the host themselves. We also have the ability to uh, uh, output essentially a stream of policy. Now, this policy stream can be sent out to almost anything that uh, you can uh, use to configure that. And so when you stream that policy out, that can be used for, let's say that you have um, you know, an enterprise uh, firewall that you want to stream the policy out, take a portion of it, and then inject it into an enterprise uh, uh, firewall or maybe to an edge firewall or maybe you're sending something out to um, you know, maybe a, 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 a web application firewall. This actually would allow you to send that policy out, put in some sort of device in the middle that can take this full set of policy, but maybe you only pull the edge pieces of it out of that, and then enforce that in maybe a, a, uh, an edge firewall that sits in between the user. So that you're basically using the same policy set, but applying different pieces of policy in different areas to give you a much richer defense in depth type of stan uh, stance against whatever types of attacks might come along. So that's just kind of a, a really quick uh, uh, discussion about what happens when you press the green button. Thanks for watching.